Hello, everyone. As I was coming, I was uh, walking this area, and then I saw a bird out of the you know um, pine trees, and then I looked inside, and there was a nest, and I was wondering. How I can, you know, um, have a video clip because I wanted to see it, and then I'm uh, talking with the John, and then I was uh, using the bathroom, and then I saw another nest. And like uh, for Koreans, like a raven brings a good news, so we have two. Two nest of ravens. There is a raven, kind of you know, like a black head raven. There are so many ravens. Those birds are also cared by our Creator God, and they have their own children, and they take care of them. It seems like I think it has been like a thirty-seven years old since I came to move this area, and God has been faithfully taking care of our family, and has God has been leading my life uh, by His hand. I'm very thankful to Him. When Jesus met people, He meets individually. He calls individually, heals individually. And then that stories are written in the Bible. There are so many people have met Jesus. Jesus met each one of them by each interview. In all true teaching, the personal element is essential. Christ in His teaching dealt with man individually. It was by personal contact and association that He trained the twelve. It was in private, often to but one listener, that he gave his most precious instruction. That is why personal contact is very important. We go to church by a group, and we try to meet Jesus by a group. But as we look at the Bible, Jesus meets individually. So I hope that this time. Will help us to examine ourselves whether each one of us has met Jesus individually or by a group. If we have not met Jesus personally, then salvation would be left from us. But if we meet Jesus, then salvation would be ours. As I was reading the Bible, I look at the story of Mary Magdalene. And Jesus actually saved her seven times out of a demon because she was demon possessed, and she was very, very grateful to God, to Jesus, because Jesus helped her to begin the new life, and she actually washed Jesus' feet with her hair, and she poured out the expensive、uh, perfumes. On Jesus' feet, and Jesus said, "Your sins are forgiven." Whenever He forgives people, those who are forgiven less and love Jesus less, the more those who are forgiven, the more then Jesus they will love Jesus the more. And when I read this Bible verse, I was very, very touched. And when I look at other people, people who are forgiven less, love Jesus less. And now I understand why some people love Jesus less, but some people love Jesus so much more. And whenever Jesus meets people individually, and then actually I learn so much. So much from Jesus Himself. 
It was in private, often too, but one listener that he gave his most precious instruction. Because uh, Jesus was uh, trying to teach and um, instruct individually. And he met Nicodemus. And he met Mary Magdalene. He met Centrion. And then gave in instruction individually. To the honored rabbi at the night conference on the Mount of Olives, to the despised woman at the well of Sychar, he opened his richest treasures, for in these hearers he discerned the impressible heart, the open mind, the receptive spirit. So Jesus met individually, personally. And then one by one, because they were so touched by him and came together. And then they came together and then listened to the sermons of Jesus. And one time, Jesus met Cornelius. The Holy Spirit met him. And then he was so inspired and touched. And then he began to help other people. And then one day, Jesus sent Peter and then made an occasion so that Cornelius was able to meet Peter. They did not know each other at that time. And God knows, you know, one of our church members, you know, uh, Mrs. Hong lives in this area, and then Mrs. Kim lives the other side of the, you know, part of the neighbor. But the God knows where they live. Just like that. Peter was living at the time, by seaside, Joppa. And this is actually the picture where Peter used to live. And then as you see the picture right here, and then there's a sign, historical site. And this is what Jesus said. Act 10, verse 6. He is lodging with Simon, a tenor, whose house is by the sea. Simon, his name is Simon, a tenor, and his house is by the sea. God knows exactly. Jesus knows exactly where each one of us is living. When we meet Jesus, we need to meet him personally. Each individual known by Jesus. Jesus knows us individually and is touched with the feeling of our infirmities. He knows us all by name. He knows the very house in which we live, the name of each occupant. He has at times given directions to his servants to go to a certain street in a certain city, to such a house, to find one of his ship. So when, we, when I look at my past life, yes, it was true. Jesus met me personally during the dark ages. I really was wondering so much why these kind of things happen. As I studied the history, I wanted to, you know, I thought, oh, I wanted to visit uh, Europe. There are many questions that I had. God put me, the desire inside of me, to want to start the conversation, English conversation. And I went to an English institute. And the, one of the most, you know, questions that I had, the occasions, you know, events happen during the dark ages. And somebody gave me a book. And then page by page, sin by sin, gave me so much, you know, touching moments. So without sleeping, I was able to read from cover to cover. Because I was working during the day, I just uh, was reading during the night. I was so touched. And also I was so shocked. And uh, because I was working and the, most of the things that I forgot, and I began to attend the church. Because I was uh, working hard. When I went to church, you know, I was very sleepy because I was so tired. It's really hard when I see people just, you know, being sleepy. 
as I was, you know,、uh, as I preach. So when I went to a church, I tried not to be sleepy, and、uh, there are some pillars in the church, and it was the best spot for me to sleep behind one of the pillars. And、uh, sometimes, even while I was sleeping, you know, I was listening some kind of you know very il funny illustrations. And one time, I was、uh, trying to look, and then guess what? One of my eyesights. One of my eyesights was not working, and I was so shocked, and I went to a hospital. And one of my eyesights was filled with the blood. And doctor told me, you know what? There's no cure for you. Either you will be healed naturally, or you already lost one of your eyesight. I was young at the time, and I was I wonder how can I live for the rest of my life. I began to think. And these days, I'm writing, you know, my autobiography book. So I'm trying to write my book. And during that time, because I had a, such a hard time, and I was、uh, trying to, you know, think, thinking about this problem for a month.、Uh, what should I do in the future? Should I just live without, you know, thinking, or without one eye? So I earnestly asked to God that I met recently. I wondered if there was a problem with my life, and I read the Bible more earnestly. I was curious about the Christian life. How should a Christian live? What kind of environment should it be? How did the patriarchs live? I wanted to get an answer from the Bible. The Lord spoke to my conscience. I thought that I should go out of the city and go to a quiet place for health and education for my children. I was asking so honestly. And、uh, God, you know, gave me what I should do. What would Jesus do if Jesus was in my shoes? I wanted to know how He would lead me, and this thought came into my mind. Actually, at the time, Jesus already told me several times. When I was learning English, Jesus already told me. As I was, you know, reading, He already told me. But one of my eyes had a problem. I was for sure this is what Jesus was talking to me. But so now I know I knew what to do. However, I was hesitating. And when my children were、uh, this young, we moved. I had my own house. I was, you know, living okay, you know, in a city. And this is the last picture, the place where I used to live in a city. And I wonder what should I do. But this is where I live. What should I do? I decided to live according to the word of the Lord. So I tried. So I started looking for a place in a countryside and nearby Seoul. Then this is the place that I found. And I look at the map of Seoul, and、uh, this is the best place that I could have found at the time. That is why we moved. And this is one of the early pictures since we moved to this area. This is just you know in front of our house, and this is our my two children. And I was raising rabbits for a living. When I was living at the time, during the day, you know, I had no problem because you know it was already you know bright. But during the night, there was no street lights. So what should I do? So, but there was no light, you know. So I just look at the outside of the stars and reading the Bible. 
I did not know what to do. Should I go out to a city once again, or should I continue to live in this countryside? But how can I survive? As I was looking at a star, and I remember that God, you know, made all these stars, and that these stars are taken care by God. What about me then? I am also in His hands. I realized He numbered all the stars. He knows me absolutely. At the time, you know, because I could not see, because I lost one side of my eyes, I decided at the time, the Holy One of Israel, who calls the host of heaven by name, and holds the stars of heaven in position, has you individually in His keeping. He looks at me individually. I said, surrender. Maybe about a month or two months. One day, my eyes were so sour, and I just opened my eyes, and guess what? I was able to see again with my two eyes. It was too bright. But the light began to come inside of me, and then my eyes was healed completely. I just didn't think about my eye problem, but I just completely trust in the Lord, and He worked in me and healed me. Although I was told by doctor that there's no cure for me, I got the clear evidence. However, I also began to go back to the old life. Parts of the Bible that I was reading at the time, the story about the servant of a king. John 4, verse 47, When he heard that Jesus had come out of Judea into Galilee, he went to him and implored him to come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. Because the servant of this king came, saying that my son was about to die. But when he looked at the Jesus appearance, and uh, he was not looking, you know, good, his clothes were, were was so, you know, humble. So he actually did not know what to do. Should I trust in him? Should I have a faith in him, whether he has a power to heal my son? He was hesitated. His faith faltered when he saw only a plainly dressed man, dusty and one with the travel. When we meet Jesus, and then every time we had this dilemma, what to do? Okay, if I go to countryside for a living because God speaks to me, but all the time we have a dilemma, should I go or should I stay? Although we followed God's direction, and then we still do not know what to do. Oh, how come you are such a young man? But why, why, you know, did you come to this countryside? I had a dilemma. Two sides, two thoughts in me. Several times I was thinking to get out of this countryside and then go to go back to a city life. But God told me. When Jesus looked, at this a noble man and he said except ye looking at the wonders and signs and that you would not believe me when he heard this saying of Jesus and he was so shocked if Jesus just passed by without healing my son then my son would be dead and then he made up his mind at the time and then at the time Jesus told him John 4 Verse 50, Jesus said to him, Go your way, your son lives. So the man believed the word that Jesus spoke to him, and he went his way. Your son lives. Because Jesus saw the man made up his mind, the word that Jesus spoke into our soul when we accept it, and then Jesus would begin performing miracles in our life. But if we do not make up our mind, then Jesus cannot perform the miracles that He wants. And then He thought, 
my son would be healed. The desire. Now he just went back to his home. The noble man wanted to see the fulfillment of his prayer before he should believe, but he had to accept the word of Jesus that his request was heard and the blessing granted. This lesson we also have to learn, not because we see or feel that God hears us or we to believe. We are to trust in his promises. There are so many people who met Jesus personally in the Bible, but every time when they meet Jesus, they had two thoughts and they didn't know what to do. But as soon as they decide up to trust in Jesus, then the miracles happen. When this noble man finished, you know, hesitating, then Jesus had a miracle. So many people had just these waves of their mind, double-minded. John 4, verse 51. And as he was now going down, his servants met him and told him, saying, Your son leaves. Because his servants wanted to let him know. And then they met the noble man. Your son leaves. But the noble man actually had a question. John 4, 52. Then he inquired of them the hour when he got better, and they said to him, Yesterday at the seventh hour, the fever left him. The seventh hour, yesterday what? When Jesus permitted, when Jesus said, he wanted to know about this. The time that Jesus permitted and healed. So, Actually, the place that he met Jesus, and then on the way home, it took several hours, and he was convicted. At the very moment when the Father's faith grips the assurance, thy son liveth, divine love touched the dying child. The Father hurries on to greet his son. He claps him to his heart as one restored from the dead, and thanks God again and again for this wonderful, restoration. What did he learn? Saved by faith. Through this lesson, him and his whole family believed in Jesus. Jesus meets us personally, gives us a personal instruction. He confessed that he did not have a faith in God. And he promised uh, since then. The same thing happened to me. My eyes were restored, but he healed me. Even now, Jesus lives. Uh, and he's working the same thing. But so many people actually, you know, guess what? They're thinking that, okay, uh, he will, I will believe in Jesus if he heals me. But the vice versa. Many consider that Jesus Christ is a savior of the world, but at the same time, they hold themselves away from him and fail to repent of their sins, fail to accept of Jesus as their personal savior. Their faith is simply the assent of the mind and judgment to the truth, but the truth is not brought into the heart that it might sanctify the soul and transform the character. The channel of our faith is our mind. When our mind is connected to God, then God begins to heal our soul. Those who have a narrow-minded will have a big heart. Those who have suffered in their mind, Jesus heals them. Those who are proud, Jesus makes them, helps them to be humble. God began to work in my life. I began to look, I began to see a lot of, you know, defects, wrongdoings in other people. And I used to think, oh, that is my special talent. But after Jesus 
met me. And my ability to criticize has been changed. And he helps me to understand. He helps me to love other people. I used to think that I was a smart person, but God softened my heart. He helps me to be humble. The healing of the mind comes to us through our soul. If we do not meet Jesus personally, then we cannot meet Him. We cannot see Him. And then we will continue to see other people's weaknesses and defects like a big stuff. And this lamb just need to follow the shepherd. The shepherd knows exactly where the green pastures are located. He leads them into the green pastures. If we meet Jesus personally, He leads us to the best place. He cares for His feeble, sickly, wandering sheep. He knows them all by name. The distress of every sheep and every lamb of His flock touches His heart of a sympathizing love and the cry for aid reaches his ear. As a time, the last times is a drawing to us. We must meet Jesus personally. If we do not meet him personally right now, then we will not be able to meet him personally even in the end times. We had a picnic a few days ago. They are my grandchildren. And one of our church members looked at my grandchildren and said, Oh, they're just like you. You know, they're so smart. But you know what? She was way over there. And then, but I was able to hear that. How could I hear? Why? You know, the voice was so still and small, but I was able to hear because it was my attention. They were my grandchildren, and I could hear it because they are my grandchildren. And also the same thing, when we are interested in the things in heaven, we are able to hear that. Wow, how can I live? What to do with my life? What if I lose one of my eyesight? How can I listen and how can I hear the voice of God? When we are interested in the heavenly things, we can hear. Those who are asking these questions, what can I do with my life? How can I live with my life? Ask Him and He will let you know. Psalms 46 verse 10, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. He said, Be still and know that I am God. I will tell you everything that you need to know. So uh, recently we helped uh, Myanmar and she's so thankful, and she sends us some pictures. You know, there is a border between Thailand and Myanmar, and some Burmese, you know, fled to the border side. And now, you know, um, Dr. Duile is helping. This is, you know, their house. This is where they live right now, during this coup. This is a second picture. Look at the house behind the people. And then their country is now suffering. That is why the people are suffering. You know, even when I was young, I was not that poor. But because of the dictator, so many people are suffering. They are dying. And they are killing each other. We as a Christians need to pay attention to these people as Jesus would. Christ left His glory. 
his honor, his high command, and for our sakes became poor, that we through his poverty might be made rich. Now the question comes home. What will we individually do for Jesus, who gave his life for a ruined world? He speaks to us individually. He guides us individually. What can I do to help other people individually? The rest of our life, we need to do in this way. So far, we lived with a selfish life. But now, from now on, let's begin to live unselfishly. No, there was a participant right now. You know, she actually gave a testimony. I used to live my life, you know, selfish life. But now, from now on, I want to live helping other people. We need to meet Jesus personally. If we do not meet him personally, individually, our religion would be worthless. As I planted uh, several churches, and I was so touched because of Christ's great love, and I was uh, planting, and uh, as I was uh, planting, a desire came to me. And the, actually, a desire was, oh, I wanted to have a big church. I wanted to have more church members. I wanted to, you know, um, baptize so many people. It was my own flesh desires. And at one time, the church actually was having a very hard time because, you know, the leader was having a hard time in the relationship with the God. I was doing my own business in, for the sake of, in the name of God's work. At that time, and my sermon was also losing the power because I lost the sight of God. I said, oh, you need to keep the you know, commands of God and you need to pay a lot of you know, tithe and offerings. But it was not Jesus' method. It was my own fleshy desire. Even now, that kind of a fleshy desire would come back to me every time. I wonder, is it Jesus speaking? You know, this is not Jesus speaking to me. We need to let other people know the method of Jesus alone. Present Jesus because you know him as your personal savior. Let him melting, let his melting love, his rich grace flow forth from human lips. You need not present a doctrinal point on this question. His love, his melting love, his rich grace, his sympathy, the Jesus that we met. I did not come to this church because of the doctrines. No, I was a touch. That's why I am here where I am. John the Baptist in the wilderness, he lived in the wilderness. So many Roman soldiers, you know, were living in a luxurious life. And God used John the Baptist to teach them a simple life. He ate honey and locusts. Sometimes he went to a city where people were living. Why did he come out of the wilderness? As I was planting churches, I was so shocked when I read this chapter about the John the Baptist. At the time, I was just so busy, you know, trying to sharing the Word of God. But when I look at the life of John the Baptist, he studied, he studied how to effectively share the gospel. I was so shocked. Let's read. From time to time, he went forth to mingle with men, and he was ever an interested observer of what was passing in the world. From his quiet retreat, he watched the unfolding of events. With the vision illuminated by the Divine Spirit, he studied the characters of man that he might understand how to reach their hearts with the message of heaven. He was an observer of what was passing in the world 
with the Holy Spirit, with the vision illuminated by the Divine Spirit, he studied the characters of man, each man. And he studied how to apply, how to share the gospel. Jesus met me personally. And then he teaches me individually the lessons that I have to learn. What about us then? Because we do not know, you know, how some people, you know, you know, live. And then as I study, as I record them, and then I meet very similar people, all kinds of people, but the, actually there are some kind of a categories, maybe, you know, 10 or 20. With the past memories, when I apply the same principle, the same thing, it would work. And then I learn how to apply, how to study people. This is the way that Jesus did. So we, as messengers of the gospel, this is a lesson from him. It is highly important that a pastor mingle much with his people and thus become acquainted with the different phases of human nature. He should study the workings of the mind, that he may adapt his teachings to the intellect of his hearers. He will thus learn the grand charity, which is possessed only by those who study closely the nature and needs of man acquainted with the different phases of human nature. Study how to, you know, contact and teach people. As we have an English seminar, also as we ha had an IYC program, the thing that they were interested was a Q&A session. Some people share you know, how could you just wait? How could you know that these certain questions were, would be questioned? So they wondered how I, you know, prepared the answers. Did I prepare in advance? No. Is it really difficult? No. Because the reason why, because these people are one of the categories. The question that they, they have, the wonders, wondering that they have, as I studied it like a group, so I was easily just answer to those questions. If we do not study, you know, these things, it is hard for us to help other people, and then we also would be, uh, we would be hard developed. Let us remember that Jesus knows us individually and is touched with the feeling of our infirmities. He knows the wants of each of his creatures and reads the hidden, unspoken grief of every heart. So Jesus meets people individually. He knows every one of sufferings and sorrows. So there was a woman pastor from Jamaica. She was uh, communicating with Heidi. And three of us, uh, translator, myself, and Heidi, we were talking. And um, she was sharing about her experience, and I was so surprised to hear her testimony. And she wrote her testimony and sent it to us. She was sick. And she was studying natural remedies, and she went to America. And she was trained as a medical missionary. And then somebody actually scanned her body and told her, oh, you have uh, so much toxins in your body, and uh, you need to uh, remove them. But, you know, it didn't work. 
And uh, somebody told her again, oh, you have so much toxins and you need, you know, uh, oriental medicines, Chinese medicine. After two weeks, you know, she lost all her energy. It was really hard to move her body. No energy and shortness of breath. And her lower part of her body was very weakened. And she was unable to move her body. And then another person who professed that, you know, he is an expert for eyes. And this person told her, oh, why don't we change, you know, something in your body? So, you know, she was like, you know, used as a test. So many treatments were done. And then suddenly her mom was going to die. So she went back to Jamaica. She was wondering, what should I do? I need to be healed. So this treatment did not work. No massage, no you know, water therapy, no Chinese medicine. What should I do? God, what should I do? And at that time, a friend from America told her, why don't you listen to the seminars from Seronam? New Star Center. So when we had a, you know, um, English seminar last January, she joined us and she was learning. She realized, and this is a letter from her. Just days after my arrival in Jamaica, a Korean friend in the U.S. registered me for the Seronam English seminar in January 2021. It brought a powerful change in my life when the director informed us that changes in the mind makes changes in the body. When I realized the intimate relationship between mind and body, I became aware of the origins of most of the health challenges I had. For years, I harbored mistrust, remorse, anxiety, discontent, and hopelessness within a male-dominated profession. I lost the joy in salvation and the assurance that Jesus really loved me. I wanted to hear the clear and commanding voice of Jesus speaking to my emotional storm, saying, Peace, be still. Oh, how much I hoped God would restore my health. The intensity of my longings seemed to transform me into the very presence of our tender and pitiful Savior. I felt His assurance that I longed for was possible at the very moment. In my depression, desperation, I reached out to Jesus in faith, making a pledge that I would do everything in my power to renew my mind so my body could be restored. I spent 14 days with God in special prayer sessions. God revealed motives, hidden agendas, psychological complexes, and character weaknesses I did not know I had. I marveled at such love that could reveal so candidly my sins and yet not turn me away. I wept before God and asked for His cleansing. About a week into these special prayer sessions, my spirit was so buoyant, my sister began to notice the difference in my attitude. Before I socially and emotionally distant to all visitors, now I was busy helping anyone who needed my help. Daily, I assisted a young lady in the community who had mental issues after a breakup with her boyfriend. The counsels I gave her were based on Dr. Kim's suggestion that only God can heal mental illness. I helped her to see that the voices in her head were Satan's lies and she was well esteemed by God.
We would meet and pray and study the scriptures. She was filling her mind with good thoughts about herself and rejecting the old lies her boyfriend and siblings would tell her. Within days, her anxiety was much reduced, and she was assisting her mom with the chores around the house. But what was most spectacular was that I had completely forgotten about my own problems. The abdominal discomfort I endured for over two years was gone. Could I dare believe that God had healed me? Something wonderful had happened in my body. A physical self-examination of my body revealed that the one sign that linked me to a Google diagnosis of ovarian cancer had somehow disappeared. My secret shame had vanished without a trace. Where did it go? I do not know. Until this day, there is no more pain or discomfort. My joy is full. And I can trust completely in God's abilities to heal the body with the herbs or massages or hydrotherapy. When I was able to look away from those things at the source of healing, God helped me to regain my health. The young lady with the mental issue also received her healing in a matter of weeks. She has given her heart to Jesus and is now working. Isn't Jesus marvelous? We both did not receive healing from neither by medications or from herbs, but by faith in Jesus. If it were good for Jesus and for the apostles, I believe faith healing must be good for me. And the great thing is that it works. So it is my commitment to leave mainstream ministry and follow on ministry Christ had outlined for me for years now. But I was too spiritually blind to notice. I am requesting your sincere prayers on this new journey. From Daphne Henry in Jamaica. She met Jesus. She probably had a dilemma in her heart, but as soon as she decided her mind, she was healed. She met Jesus personally. Even Jesus right now is trying to meet us personally and individually. Please admit me. If you meet me, your problems will be solved. You know, sometimes, often, there are people who have met Jesus personally here at Serona. And this ministry, you know, has been blessed by God, and just like Jesus heals the people. But those who have met Jesus personally, their disease would come back again and again and again. If you have met Jesus, then your whatever you have will be solved. So many people said that we are living in the last days. What should we do? How should we live? We have no idea when this pandemic would end. We have no idea when we will get vaccinations. But if we meet Jesus personally, we would not fear about these things. By Bible study and daily communion with Jesus, we shall gain clear, well-defined views of individual responsibility and strength to stand in the day of a trial and temptation. He whose life is united to Christ by hidden links will be kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation. Yes, let's meet Jesus personally. The one who speaks to us in our hearts, when he speaks, grabs him. Uh, my prayer is that we will gain victory in him. Our Heavenly Father, 
You came to this earth so that you want to meet us individually, and you speak to our heart every time. Lord, thank you so much for your special invitation so that we can meet you personally and individually. Lord, we have not forgotten the things that you have done for our lives. But as sinners, we long to go back to all the life. Have mercy upon us. Lord, we make up our mind once again. We don't want to be separated from you. We want to, Lord, hold on to you. Help us to realize how weak we are. Help us to be humble before you. Grant us the longing heart. There are so many people are dying without knowing you. Even you have met us individually and personally. Although we know that it is our responsibility to help other people to meet you, but we often forget. But Lord, have mercy upon us so that we will do the same work that our forefathers of faith had done. Please use us. Lord, be with us, especially our brothers and sisters who have a longing heart to meet you, to share the gospel with other people. Please give us the purpose of heaven. Lord, there are still so many people who have not met you, and they are dying, either illness or pain. If we open our hands earlier, then maybe many people could have lived. Please forgive us our neglect. Once again, we want to, O oh Lord, work hard. We want to the work that you want us to do before you come back. Please, O oh Lord, guide our steps, what we are trying to do as a ministry, as Heronam. Make a way so that your will will be done. Please help us to work and co-work with other people so that your will will be done. Protect us, and we want to meet you until you come back, working hard, faithfully. Be with all our church members especially. Please, O oh Lord, give blessings to those who want to the work of God. Bless them financially as well so that we will not lose the sight of you, the goal that you have given to us. There are still faithful people who worship faithfully, who give faithfully. Lord, please bless them. Because you promised that I will bless you abundantly as you as you worship faithfully. Lord, we will um, have another special program for pastor's wives from next week. Lord, this is another channel to share the gospel. So, Lord, please be with each one of them who will join. We pray that today will be a day that our hearts will be renewed in Jesus. We pray all these things in Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you.